The notorious Conor McGregor is the most famous UFC fighter to ever enter the octagon. He was the first simultaneous double champ in company history. His pay-per-view numbers blow every other fighter out of the water. He was named the world's highest paid athlete by Forbes. So why is he competing Saturday night at UFC 264 in Las Vegas? Revenge. McGregor's rivalry with Dustin Poirier goes all the way back to September of 2014 when they first faced off. Back then, the Notorious was on a rocket ship towards superstardom and knocked out the diamond in round one just as predicted. But if you followed Poirier's career, it's all about one thing, persistence. His never quit attitude and stop at nothing drive to be the best and arguably the most ruthless division in the UFC has defined his career. And when he finally got his rematch with McGregor more than six years later, he was ready. Tonight is one of the best I've ever felt, honestly. I was emotionless, I was an assassin, and I was here to execute. I'll regroup and pick myself up, get up off the floor and go again, and that's it. Now McGregor and Poirier will settle the score in one of the most anticipated trilogies in combat sports history. Connor, in the build for the last fight, you were unusually kind to Dustin. Now on fight week, it's the exact opposite. So when did that switch happen? Because he got knocked the f out. Not McGregor fast, McGregor sleep. I'm gonna go through his head, put holes in them, and take it off his shoulders. That's the goal here. So it's on now. Saturday night, you can walk around that octagon like a dog and put to sleep. Here we go. Welcome in CBS Sports combat analyst and co-host of Morning Combat, Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell, who join us from the ceremonial weigh-in in Vegas. Luke, you are there. What are your takeaways from the weigh-in? Conor McGregor looked to be on fire. I got to say that there was a lot more people here in attendance today than there were for yesterday's press. Or some of that is to be expected, but it was really kind of full. That was interesting. Conor was... To me, doing a lot of the stuff he was doing yesterday, maybe a little bit more intensity. And the real thing I took away, though, was Dustin Poirier continues to not buy into it, continues to just do his own thing, be on his own path, march to the beat of his own drum. Will Connor be successful? I guess we'll have to debate it and figure it out. But it does look like Dustin, for one reason or another, is just isn't buying into what Connor is trying to sell. Look, great energy inside this building. Only Connor McGregor brings that. And I think if you were a little bit questionable, as we were, about Connor's demeanor at the press conference on Thursday, Thursday. I feel like he repaired it to a, to a certain degree, coming out looking intense, saying the right things. Here's one thing, though, that this the, the union between them staring across from each other and that energy in the building told me is that this will be the best fight of the trilogy. I think it's going to be all action. I think Conor McGregor, for whatever is left, right, it's not going to be the same guy from 2015 and 2016. That guy's gone. But whatever McGregor has left and whatever he didn't do right in the second fight, I expect him to amend it to the third with energy, with aggression. I I think we're going to see high theater. It all comes down to whether Conor McGregor can improve that much in six months and whether he is truly dialed in and ready to win a fight this dangerous. 62% of the tickets on McGregor. We heard the boos for Dustin Poirier during the ceremonial way. And of course, McGregor, the fan favorite, you're getting slight plus money here. That has shifted the odds from plus 115 to plus 105. Perhaps some of the sharp money will come in just before the fight on Saturday night. BC, who's your money on on this trilogy fight? I got Dustin Poirier. I think we're going to see action here. I love the chances here of taking him, even as a slight favorite. Yes, you got plus odds from McGregor going for the knockout. He can find your chin early. That's going to be his game plan. But Poirier is more battle-tested in a lot of ways, well more well-rounded. He can take the fight to the ground if he needs to, and at times I expect him to do that. And I think this is a fight that's going to go into the championship rounds, as they say. But it's going to be Poirier with the better gas tank and the toughness that's not going to give up. I think he drops McGregor. I think he finishes him around four. Maybe a submission here either way. Poirier walking away as the champion of the rivalry between them. Let's assume for just the sake of argument that we think that both guys are more or less equally talented. They don't have the exact same skills, but they more or less have the same genetic material to do pretty impressive stuff. What's the difference between them? Well, the answer would be among many things, but the one I'm going to point to is Dustin Poirier is not the guy cramming for this test. He has been steadily in steady hall, excuse me, study hall this entire time. Every year, taking tough fights, rebuilding, working on skills in the gym. Connor has taken significant amounts of time off. Now, for this fight, he has been in the lab, so it could be very, very different on Saturday. But for the reasons I'm articulating, I do think that both guys have obviously very different games, but they're both very highly 
high-level athletes, high-level fighters. But one guy is just much more prepared for this moment. That's Dustin Poirier. Don't sleep on Connor. Obviously, he's dangerous, especially early. But I like Dustin Poirier to carry it late and then finish it off around the fourth round. Both of the previous two fights ended with a TKO. McGregor knocked out Poirier in 2014. Poirier then returned the favor in January. I want each of you to make a case for a McGregor uh, to win via TKO and Poirier to win via TKO on Saturday night. Start with McGregor at plus 138. BC, make the case for McGregor to score a knockout. Well, look, McGregor's not, you know, washed up. He's still a threat in there, as we mentioned. And let's not forget, in that second fight, McGregor had some moments. He thinks he had Poirier hurt in both the first and second round. We know it was the calf kicks that immobilized McGregor, and he became a sitting duck. But McGregor can find Poirier's chin. He does have the mental strength to lean back on, knowing that he has finished Poirier in the past in the first round, granted seven years ago in a different weight class. But for McGregor, I'd like to see maybe if he looks to be the counter striker rather than the aggressor. I think his best path the victory is still one round one finding Poirier with that one perfect shot to, to make him scramble to put him uh, on ice skates as they say and run in there and figure it out and finish him if you're looking for just from an intense factor McGregor brought that today he's going to be going after it for sure two things I would point to number one McGregor's power power in my mind absolutely carries to 155 maybe it's not exactly the blinding power it was at 145 but it can absolutely turn a fight on a dime just like that. He's still got that pop. The second thing I would say is we talk about Dustin Poirier being battle-tested. That's the good side. What's the bad side? If you rank the top 10 fighters in UFC history who have absorbed the most significant strikes, Dustin Poirier is sitting at seven. Seven. He is the seventh most in terms of uh, uh, significant strikes absorbed. He takes a lot of punches. Now, I don't necessarily think that that means he's going to be washed up or shop-worn for this particular contest. But, hey, dude, you can only take so many of those before a they accumulate to something bad or is he going to be open for that conor mcgregor electrocuting right hand or left hand excuse me listen he to bc's point he scored it a couple of times in the second fight why couldn't he score it in the third a very real possibility all right now let's make the case for poirier to win via tko at plus 175 luke i'll start with you does the diamond use a similar strategy from the last fight I think some things he needs to work on, or I should say, uh, repurpose and bring back from the second fight. Obviously, I think you know, facing a fellow southpaw and McGregor makes things a little bit different, but I did like the fact that his jab was pumping. I like the angles he was showing. I think continuing to work that will be good. But I really believe that what he needs to do this time is you have got to slow Conor McGregor down early. He is a much different fighter by the end of the second round if he can even get that far. You saw that in the first fight with that takedown from the switch stance. I don't think that particular entry is going to be there. And Dustin Poirier has good takedowns, but they come off of his strikes. So what I think he needs to do is lock up with him, wear on him, drain him, make him wrestle even if you don't get it, and then really put the pace on him later. But the early rounds, Dustin Poirier has plenty of reasons to, to be offensive, but careful, pour it on a little bit later. Yeah, you nailed it in so many ways. You, Dustin Poirier's got to get the fight to the latter half of it, for sure. It's not just Connor's stamina. It's the fact that Poirier is like naturally the bigger man, so he's got more ways to take the fight there to what you're saying. You take him down. He took Connor down with ease in round one of their second fight. He can force the clinch. you got to lean on Connor McGregor because Connor McGregor will come after you as a sniper looking to get you out with either the perfect punch or a combination. But he doesn't sit and punch with his opponents often. And he certainly doesn't want to do that with Poirier. That's the sequence that led to Connor getting finished in the second round of their second fight. So if you're Poirier, you want to stay in close, make it a little bit more of a fight rather than two sharpshooters trying to land the perfect counter shot. Either way, if he gets past that threshold, let's say, of midway through the third round, we get into the second half of it. There are so many more ways Dustin Poirier can win this fight. You have to love his chances there. So what's more likely, McGregor winning via TKO or Poirier winning via TKO? Luke, what say you? Ooh. That's tough. Um, both guys, I'll say this. Both guys are very capable of putting their opponents on the canvas, and they got a long list of scalps of doing it, so not chumps either. Good fighters. Gun to head scenario, I'll say Poirier because I think he has a little bit more of a dynamic threat throughout the course of the fight, but I got to say early, man, it is super, super dumb to look past a guy like Conor McGregor. I'm not saying you're doing that, Hakeem. I'm just saying for anybody else out there, 
That guy has zip and pop, phenomenal accuracy. Both guys are a, a real threat to be able to TKO the other guy. I think it's whoever you think is going to win this fight because I don't have the confidence that this fight can go the distance. Mm. This is not the same Conor McGregor from the Nate Diaz rematch five years ago. He's just not the same guy. And even in that fight, McGregor had to walk through hell and some big moments to survive it. But he was fighting a guy in Nate Diaz who was accommodating the style that Conor McGregor wanted. There was not going to be takedowns in that fight. Conor McGregor was allowed to box from distance, and he gutted it out, and he went the distance. You don't typically see, though, Conor McGregor in five-round wars and not when he hasn't been active. I don't. I think there's going to be a TKO either way. I just don't see Conor McGregor doing that against a guy in Poirier who has too many ways to change his game plan, put him on his back, so to speak here. So bet the under, but not the early under necessarily. I think there's going to be some rounds of back-and-forth action. I still think whoever you want, who you think is going to win this fight, that's the better TKO bet. Yeah, BC, to your point, 10 of the last 11 fights involving Conor McGregor have not gone the distance. Saturday's fight, as you guys know, is a five-round fight. Take a look at the most common round bet over or under two and a half rounds. Over minus 150, under plus 110. Luke, what say you over or under two and a half rounds in the trilogy fight? I mean, two dangerous guys. Obviously, you know, to your point, Conor McGregor, this is why he's beloved. Obviously, he wins a lot of the time, but win or lose, man, these are action-packed fights for the most part. So that's why people like him a lot, among many other reasons. I think it goes the over, to be honest with you. I think Dustin Poirier, not that he got lucky in the second time, but he found a nice shot and a flow in the second round that I don't know that McGregor's going to be as defensively vulnerable in the ways that he was in the second one. I think he's going to have to dig for it a little bit more. He's capable of doing it, but inside the first two and a half rounds, certainly possible. I'm going to say it's much more plausible that it goes over. Connor's always been good at telling you exactly what went wrong. Sometimes you can look at that as excuses, and he's made a few of them of why he lost the second Poirier fight. But if there's one thing I can take from Connor's, I do believe there may have, they may not have had all his ducks in a row. There probably was truth to the idea that he was looking past Poirier to a degree, maybe hoping for that Manny Pacquiao boxing match, and wasn't as dialed in with the right game plan, with the right cardio, with everything he needed. So what does that tell me? That Connor's going to be there to make this a fight, so take the over in this case. He's going to push it. I don't think either of them makes it to the distance there because I think the pace is going to be too aggressive and there's going to be too much action in there. But I think McGregor is going to fare better than the second fight, last longer, because I think he's going to have to pour out whatever is left of him. All right, before I let you go, BC, over or under one and a half shoeys on Saturday night? Uh, for Tai Tuivasa, that would be a huge over. For these guys, I think we should retire from the whole shoey campaign. It's just not hygienic, okay? It's just, it's just not how I get down normally. But, you know, when the people need it, when they want it, when they crave it, sometimes in morning combat, you got to give it to them. Listen, when you ask us to deliver, we deliver. But if we don't need to drink out of people's disgusting shoes, I won't. Yeah. You, you know what that is, right? That is pure authenticity. Luke Thomas, Brian Campbell, <laughs> here on CBS Sports HQ. Well done, men. Well done. For all things combat, check out Morning Combat with Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. You can watch the series on YouTube. You can also listen to the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Morning Combat. Download and subscribe today. And, of course, we will have wall-to-wall -wall coverage all day on Saturday leading up to UFC 264 and post-UFC 264 right here on CBS Sports HQ. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.